Meanwhile, the Restaurants Association says the government needs to step up with tax cuts as many of their members report losses from the COVID-19 travel ban. It estimates restaurants are losing a collective $50 million a week across the country. With over 130,000 workers across the industry, some owners have no choice but to lay off staff. Our reporter Alex Perrottet caught up with the CEO of the Restaurants Association, Marissa Bedouin, who says some business owners are looking at closing down. Just over the last three to four weeks, um, we've had several calls from business owners just telling us just exactly how desperate they are um, and asking for advice in terms of whether they should shut down, you know, what are the predictions for how long this might carry on. Um, yeah, and it's very, it's very upsetting um, to hear businesses struggling like this, for sure. And we're talking about people who, you know, are reasonably reliant um, on tour groups coming through. These tour groups will often pre-book, um, you know, months in advance to come in and dine somewhere. And so we've just had a lot of feedback from our members, particularly in those spaces that have, you know, seen a drop in revenue. And with hospitality, there's not, you're talking about those bookings, there's not a lot of money usually laid down as deposits. So when you have cancellations, you're losing a lot, aren't you? Absolutely. I mean, it is standard to, to seek some sort of deposit, but we're not talking huge deposits here. You know, it wouldn't be enough to, all, to cover, you know, the entire sort of lunch or dinner, for example. And um, especially if these cancellations have happened months in advance as well. Mm. Now, tell us, have you got any idea, I know this is a recent phenomenon, something that's happened, but any idea about a, a figure that we can say how much has been lost? Some of these restaurants are talking about up to 60% loss in terms of trade coming in the door. What about more broadly? What, what are we seeing? Any figures you can give us? Yeah. Well, exactly as you said before, we've seen sort of um, figures saying, you know, around about a 60% loss in some cases. But generally speaking, um, we're talking about $15 million a week for the tourism industry as a whole. We're still working on exactly what that means for the hospitality industry, but it's significant. And they're small businesses. They are. Small businesses, um, many who are reliant on that sort of trade coming in and have been severely affected. We've spoken to people who are looking at potentially closing their businesses um, temporarily at this stage, but we don't know how long this will go on for. It's, it, we're sort of in the dark here. And of course, even with you closed, I mean, you're probably still paying the rent, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Marissa, I wanted to ask you, it's not just, um, say, the travel ban and, and, and people not being able to be here, being the clientele for a lot of these businesses, it's people afraid, isn't it? I mean, people are avoiding a lot of those Asian restaurants down Dominion Road. We know that coronavirus is present in a lot of other countries. Italy's dealing with a crisis. I think they had a spike of 25% increase in cases just overnight. Uh, I don't know if we're seeing the same sort of exodus from your local Italian pasta restaurant. What's behind that, do you think? Well, look, I, I do think that um, there is some misinformation perhaps being circulated. We don't have any confirmed cases in New Zealand, you know, so we are encouraging people to continue to dine out at their favourite local restaurants, yeah. There seems to be some claims of a xenophobia, a, a fear that, uh, oh, well, you know, that's not, doesn't even look that, that healthy, or, you know, compared to some of the, the, the cuisine that I might be used to. Do you think there's a little bit of that, even sort of non-malicious, just, I, I guess, subconscious xenophobia there? Um, look, I really would like to classify it as more misinformation. Yeah, I just think people maybe haven't, um, don't have all the facts um, and don't fully understand exactly um, what's happening, I suppose, in our restaurant scene here in New Zealand. Um, but we're continuing with the same message. We encourage people to continue to dine out. Now, as the Restaurants Association, you're hearing a lot from your members. What are you doing as an organisation to support them? Um, are, are they going to see some type of financial relief from the organisation or, or other organisations? Um, well, we'd really like the government to step up and perhaps look at some, um, some tax cuts potentially for businesses. And we'd really like to see a solid plan for when the travel bans are lifted, exactly how our industry um, and wider industries um, can look to sort of recover from this glitch. Yeah. And, uh, and so you're asking the government to step up, uh, tax relief, we've also heard about possible rent assistance, is that another option? Yeah, absolutely. I think really we are open to assistance from the government um, for our businesses. Um, hospitality makes up, you know, uh, sorry, hospitality contributes a large amount to the economy in general and we'd really like to see them supported by government.
Now, the government has said they will give $11 million to the tourism industry. Have you got any specifics on that, how much the restaurants might see of that? Um, we don't yet, um, but we are meeting with the minister next week, so hopefully we'll have some information. OK, and what else could be done apart from financial assistance? A anything else that you want to put on the table with the government? Yeah. Um well, I guess I can mention what we're doing as an association. So we are offering sort of further assistance through marketing and mentoring support in business because we think it's, you know, during these times, it's especially important to be getting that kind of assistance. So we're stepping out there and, are, and helping members with, with those parts of their business. I guess when a crisis like this happens, it's, it's, it's only now that we realise, wow, we do rely so much on just one country coming in here, How much, and that's China. I mean, uh, I guess, is, is this a bit of a message that, wow, perhaps we even need to diversify here to make sure that if this sort of thing happens again, we're not so hard hit? Well, I think, you know, New Zealand is in a great position. We are a very popular destination um, by many different countries around the world. Um, so we are in a good position and um, I think we will certainly recover.